but Mr. Jones, if you'll come forward. Uh, I would like to go uh, allow Mr. Devolina to go first. Sure. If he's, me, if he's listed, ask, uh, yep, Mr. Devolina, please come up. All right, well, thank you and good evening, uh, council members, uh, mayor. My name is Alan Devolina. I am the father of the I'm the father of Al Corporal Allen Devlin II. This was the unarmed Marine who was murdered by the Palm Springs Police Department on November 10, 2012. I'm here to request that a thorough investigation be conducted and that the appropriate actions be taken against the two police officers who murdered my son. I want to express my objection to these two police officers being placed back to active assignment prior to an investigation being completed and without a report being provided to us and to the public. On December 10, 2012, it was reported that one of the officers had returned back to work. On January 2, 2013, it was reported that the second officer had returned to work. And it wasn't until January 8, 2013, that Captain Dennis Graham communicated to me that the report of the police investigation had been completed and sent to the Riverside DA's office. This is, this is all after the, the two officers have already returned back to work. While they have returned back to work, no information on these officers, nor have their identities, identities been provided. To this point, the DA's office does not have the case in their system. As stated, this incident ha occurred on November 10, 2012. And to this point, no law enforcement reports or medical examiner findings have been provided to us. An injustice has occurred here in the city of Palm Springs. A murder committed by two Palm Springs police officers. An unlawful killing of my son, Corporal Allen Devlin II. Without any threat to the officers' lives. Without a crime being committed by my son. The officers opened fire on my unarmed son with the intent to kill. These two officers murdered an innocent man, a U.S. Marine veteran who fought for your freedom. Someone who was fun-loving, hardworking, and charismatic. A recipient of the Medal of Good Conduct. A battalion prayer leader. A son. A grandson. A nephew. A brother. A friend. If this murder is allowed to happen to my son, it can happen to anyone. Only through thorough investigations and appropriate actions to hold these two police officers accountable for the murder of my son can we hope to ensure that it doesn't happen again. So council members, mayor, please do the right thing. Don't let the cover-up occur and let justice be served. Thank you. And thank you, sir. Mr. Jones? To this very distinctive board, I am Eddie Jones, President of the Los Angeles Civil Rights Association. I work alongside Mr. Devolina. I am a fact finder, <clears throat> and under the Constitution of the United States of America, Alan Devolina, Corporal Alan Devolina, had a right to live. He had a right to the pursuit of happiness. He was unarmed, and I never heard of in my life an officer jumping into the passenger window of a vehicle with his weapon in his hand and firing right away as soon as he gets into the car, severely wounding Mr. Devalina. And then several other shots are fired, which could endanger not only, but the whole community was in danger at that time. These officers fired lots of shots from their, from their weapons. They had beanbag guns, pepper spray, PR-24s, tasers, but yet they use deadly force first. It's inappropriate, and that is against the law. Just because you have a peace officer status doesn't mean that you have the right to take a human life without concern of what could be done. It was a, it was a ticket, it was a, stop, a police stop to find out what was going on. It turned into a murder. If you're going to pull someone over because you feel like they're intoxicated or whatever, it doesn't mean you dive in through their window, uh, gun hole firing your weapon. 
Officer Chad Nordman and Officer Michael Heron were out of policy and procedure to take a human life without the concern of the repercussions of this man being a corporal in the United States Marine that served our country in the Middle East. Went there and came back without a scratch. Came home to America and now he is dead. There, this needs to be investigated. Myself and Mr. Alan Devalina just came back from Washington, D.C. last month. We went to the Department of Defense. We've been talking to the Marines in CIS and the JAG unit, and we have plans, and we will implement our plans to make sure that justice is served. I don't understand why these two officers are back at work. They should not be. You don't have to fire several projectiles from your weapon in order to take a human life. Let's analyze and evaluate the history of these two officers. Let's look and see how many people have filed reports on their bad behavior and activities. We need to take a very close look and put a very fine magnifying glass on how policy and procedure policing is supposed to be done. There is a way to deal with someone who is under the influence of alcoholic beverages or you feel or you premeditate a conspiracy that something's wrong, you don't know what's wrong. If you dive in through the window and you start firing your weapon and you never ask the question, how will you know who this individual is or what they're really about? You can't be an officer unless you respect human life first. That's what real policing is all about. You can't take a life without the permission you can't just take life into your own hands and feel that you can just kill a human being that has served our country. Thank you very much. And thank you.